Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with another Pops Knife Making Project of the Month. Today, making a Persian fighter. Today's Pops Project of the Month is a special project for me for two reasons. The first is that I'm making a knife as a wedding gift for an old friend of my son's and a former employee of mine, Nick and his lovely bride, Madison. Now, uh, Nick and Madison are both enthusiasts of uh, pointy, cutty, shooty type things, so this seemed like the perfect wedding gift for them. The second reason is that I've actually never made a Persian fighter before in my life, and so this is gonna be an exciting project for me, a new learning experience. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll start with this piece of steel, one and a half by 12 by an eighth of an inch. It's straight from the mill, meaning that it has scale on the outside, which we don't want. So we'll start by cleaning that off. Here I'm using the surface grinding attachment of my Ameribraid grinder. Extremely useful gizmo. Obviously you can do this by hand, but it's a lot more work. Now you could argue that the steel I'm using today, 154CM, is maybe along with ATS-34, one of the first of what people now call super steels. So kind of an old school steel, but the great thing about it is it's easy on the wallet and you get a lot of performance at a pretty reasonable price. Um, this, that what I'm gonna be using today is ingot steel, not powdered steel. There's a powdered steel variant of it. Joey at Pops really likes this ingot type because it has larger carbides and that gives really a kind of toothy cutting edge, a lot of bite on the cutting edge when you sharpen it. Because it's been around a long time, heat treaters understand it well and so if you want to send out your knife for heat treating instead of doing the heat treating yourself, this is a great choice. Here's a look at the knife that I have in mind. I looked at a lot of authentic pesh cobs, often referred to as Persians, because they derive generally from Iran. Now the idea obviously is not to make a historical reproduction, but you know, something that you can make out of the kind of materials that you can get at say Pops Knife Supply. I've found that these are pretty tricky to design. They're just a lot of complex curves in a Persian and it took me a fair amount of tinkering in Fusion 360 to get a flow that I thought was pleasing. I'll print out my design, cut it out, and then scribe it onto the steel. Then it's off to the grinder. Using a worn 36 grit ceramic belt, I'll grind the outline. You want a worn belt for this part of the build or you'll just strip off half the abrasive. My Ameribraid has a ton of different radii on the small wheel attachment, but you can use idler wheels and other smaller radius wheels to do good looking, consistent radius cuts on your knife. Supporters of this channel on Patreon can find and print out copies of the plans for this design on my Patreon site. As always, today's Pops Project of the Month is sponsored by Pops Knife Supply. Now, a lot of you guys have heard me talking about the great knife making products from stainless steel and high carbon steel to handle making materials, wood, bone, antler, micarta, all that sort of material that Pops carries. But the big news is that Pops is moving to just a huge new location a little bit north of uh, Atlanta, basically quadrupling the amount of uh, retail space available. It's just gonna be a super cool place. I'll be showing some progress shots as we go, some from early in the build out process and some as they're getting close to completion. One of the coolest things about it is that there's gonna be a working knife making shop behind glass so you can see exactly how various products are used and watch some knife makers in action. And they'll also be doing all kinds of events, hammer-ins, training, craft shows, and so on. The official opening date is November 11, 2023. You can find the new store at 1742 Candler Highway, Gainesville, Georgia. I mean, I really expect this to become just kind of a destination for knife lovers all over the country. 
popsknife.supplies. Now that we've got the blade outlined, I'll drill the holes. Normally I like to drill holes first using the milling vise in my mill, but with a complex handle shape like this that I'm doing as sort of a one-off, I figured I should make sure that the holes fit the flow of the knife as I actually ground it. To go with the old school steel, I'll be using old school fasteners, the classic loveless fisheye bolt. The bolt itself is 137 thou thick, so I'll get all saucy and use a number 29 drill, but a 964 will work just fine. Scribe a couple of lines to grind to. Then it's back to the grinding room to knock out the bevels. I'll be using a grinding jig that I made myself. This allows me to grind four, five, six, and seven degree grinds without having to set angles, monkey around with screws, or any of that stuff that you do with normal jigs. Just clamp her on there with a welding clamp and go after it. Nice and stable, works great. Here I'm using Pop's Choice VSM 880 ceramic belts, starting with 36 grit, then moving up to 120 once I reach the scribe lines. I could use the jig, but I kind of like doing freehand once the lines are more or less where I want them to. I feel like I have more control when I'm trying to really refine things at the very end. And there's the blade, ready for heat treatment. I'll be using this cool Butterscotch G10 that the guys at Pops sent me. Now, by the time I'd started, I actually had totally forgotten that Pops also sent me this yellow vulcanized fiber material and some super thin natural micarta to use as spacer material. I'll show you how I layer that up on a different pair of handle scales. I'll start out by cutting out pieces to fit the scales. Before gluing them, you want to abrade all the surfaces with sandpaper, then degrease them with acetone or some similar solvent. Then I'll glue them up using Pops recommended CA glue. Best believe you do not want to forget your rubber gloves when doing this. I'm clamping the scales to HDPE plastic, which doesn't really stick to super glue. So once the glue is cured, I can just pop them right off. So let's jump back to the actual handle scales I'm really using. First, a couple dabs of super glue, followed by a spritz of accelerator to harden it up immediately. I was never a big fan of super glue, but the Pops guys have got me on team super glue now. And I gotta say, this technique works great for this type of knife. With the knife as a template, I'll drill the holes through both scales at the same time. Again, I'll be adding the spacers afterward because I forgot them during the build. But everything works exactly the same as if the spacers were there. Once you're done, you just pop those little dabs of super glue free and you have two nicely drilled handles. Then I'll draw the outline and cut them out on the bandsaw. Now I actually did not know that these were G10 until I put them on the saw and saw the sparks flying off the blade. G10 is made from glass, so this is an excellent way to trash a bandsaw blade. Normally you want to grind G10 instead of sawing it, but in for a penny, in for a pound. Off camera, I went ahead and glued up the spacers and drilled the holes, so we're almost ready for assembly. Last thing to do, though, is to trim, grind, and polish the front face of the scales. Forget this, and you're in trouble because it's impossible to clean them up after they're glued down.
Now for this project, I'm using loveless bolts, a fastener popularized by the famous knife maker Bob Loveless. They have bolts that act as a shank for the fastener assembly and then two threaded pieces of quarter inch brass round. So you need to countersink a pocket for the brass piece. This is normally done with a step drill or countersink like this, assuring you that the brass nut will be perfectly concentric with the bolt. If it doesn't, it won't fit. You can buy one of these from Pops, specifically sized for these bolts, but alternatively, you can actually make one yourself. Since I don't have one in this exact size, I'll go that route. I'll grind a relief off the end of the drill, like so. The drill keeps your grind symmetrical. Then, using a cutoff wheel on my Dremel, oh wait, I can't find the cutoff wheel, so I'll use this little grinding attachment. Whatever. The point is, I want to grind a reasonably clean, reasonably square section down at the base of this little protrusion at the end so that the step drill cuts a square seat for the brass nuts to fit onto. And next, I'll use the step drill to pop a hole in the scales. You want to leave a little material in the scale so that the bolts will actually have some meat to clamp the scales down with. And that's that. Fits like a glove. Now, time to heat treat the steel. 154 cm needs to be heated between about 1900 and 2000 degrees, depending on the qualities you want from the steel. I'll go for 1900, soaking it for half an hour, then quenching. Half an hour at that kind of temp is a very long time, so the steel needs to be protected from the atmosphere. So I'll wrap it in special stainless steel tool wrap, of course available from Pops, made to withstand these high temperatures. Into the heat treating oven. Then plate quenching to harden the steel. In the last POPS project of the month, I used a vice type plate press, but you don't really need to do it that way. You can plate quench by just plopping the knife down on a plate, squashing it with a second plate, and blasting a little compressed air in there to speed cooling. Works fine either way. Then a couple hours tempering at 400 degrees to reduce the brittleness of the steel. Obviously, you can do this in a temperature-controlled oven like my heat-treating oven, but you can still do it in a good old kitchen oven, too. Afterward, I'll clean off the scale on a sanding block. Then it's over to the belt grinder again. Look, there are a million ways to finish knives. I'm partial to 3M's Gator Grit Trizac Structured Abrasives, which, of course, you can get at Pops. In this case, I'll hit it with 300 micron, then finish with 160 micron. Now it's time to put it all together. Adhesion of glue is all about having a clean, oil-free surface. I'll give the tang a quick once-over in the abrasive blasting cabinet that'll give a nice toothy sort of surface for the glue to grab onto. Getting it perfectly flat is obviously important too so that it'll mate with the tang properly without leaving any unsightly gaps. Scuffing it up with sandpaper or Scotch-Brite helps give more surface area for the glue to bind to also. Now everything gets cleaned with solvent, in this case acetone, and we're ready for glue up. I'm using Pops two-part epoxy. I like this because it has longer working time than the epoxy you'll find at most big box stores, and that is handy. No need to rush through the process. You can take your time and you're not going to have the glue starting to cure before you get done. So we slather away, put the scales on. Then 
then tighten up the bolts with a screwdriver. Afterward, clamp it up. And clean the squeeze out along the front of the scales with rubbing alcohol and some Q-tips. After leaving the epoxy to cure overnight, I'll take a last trip to the grinder. After roughing everything out, I'll turn to these scallop belts in 220 and 400 grit. Scallop belts are great for curved surfaces, especially on the inside curves of the handle. Always a tricky place to get right. A quick trip to the buffer. And here we are. If you look at the handles of vintage Persian knives, they generally have ivory handles. This Butterscotch G10 gives a sort of modern nod to that old ivory. And it finishes out like candy. Finally, I'll etch a message for the bride and groom on my laser engraver. And there we have it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. And uh, congratulations to Nick and Madison and all my best to them as they move on into their new life as a married couple. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com